So I start um, with the. I will try to summarize. I start with the background of what we went through under the military. Um, the Nigerian title, Nigerian military government and anti press laws, which is, um, I tried to, I went back into history how anti press laws that um, started with anti press decrees and edits as far back as the SDAs. And of course, uh, and he said all those things and how the press had been able uh, to fight back. Because the freedom that the media enjoyed today was not given by the constitution. Yeah, I repeat, the media, the freedom that the media enjoyed today was not given by the constitution. Yes, there's said 29, there's 22 of the constitution that uh, gives the media um, the responsibility to hold government accountable. But that is the only profession in the constitution that was given specific responsibility. So, but over the years, the media have been quite resilient in uh, confronting the government on various infractions by going to court. And because of the litigations of media practitioners, different decisions in court have expanded the frontiers of freedom. That's why I said that whatever freedom we have was not given by the constitution, but it was fought for by the Nigerian through various litigation, which are encompassed in what is uh, what I've just written here. And uh, right from in the 60s, from Chikiobi's case, sedition, down to the military era, the issue of fake news and uh, uh, his speech and fake news have been uh, uh, quite loud in the past uh, 48 hours with the Minister of uh, Information, Lion Wyman, talking about a new law is coming to regulate uh, uh, social media. But prior to that, in August 2017, the then acting president, Ego Shifai, hinted that his speeches will not be termed a variant of terrorism. It was uh, it was obviously reacting to a news media uh, person that his speech. So I went to what is his speech. I thought to prepare that his speech is a speech which attacks a person or group on the basis of uh, attributes such as race, religion, ethnic origin, sexual orientation, disability, gender, blah, blah, blah. So of course I went to uh, the context of the uh, Prevention of Terrorism Act. Then what the issue, as I now stated here, that when you look at the criminal code, that, that, that different provisions that, that are taking care of all these infractions that uh, instead of saying that you want to go and propagate uh, uh, why a new law to deal with this speech and uh, fake news, we have enough provisions in our statute of what? Section 48 and Section 42 on promoting intercommunal work. Any person who, without lawful authority, carries on or makes preparation or kind on or aids in or advice to kind on. Preparation for any war, war life, and blah blah blah. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's take care of that. Then, section 59, section 1, publication of false news will defend the cause of fear and alarm to the public. That is there. Then, section 86, threatening violence. Then, you have section 88A, provoking, provoking breach of peace by offensive publication. That one is there. Then, you have section 204, insult to religion. Then, you have uh, section 3. 75 um, criminal information, which is one aspect that uh, I so much strongly against. Uh, because the defamation is uh, both thought and, 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 and uh, criminal. So if somebody, somebody can sue you for defamation, of course you can also be charged with criminal defamation. To this journalist, many of journalists, I mean, I, I, I haven't seen uh, uh, no sir, because uh, our own generation, we were able to confront this evil of many. I mean, with a life, but I, my last encounter was um, uh, October 13, 1996, yeah. when I was uh, adopted. So, you see, and when I look back, the mode of adoption, uh, where, I mean, how the, the kind of the, how the thing was done, I look back and I said, it's like we're just going back to our bachelor era.
During our time, it was like a, a suicide mission. You know, yeah, we had gorilla, journalism, uh, everybody went on and ran. So I know sometimes you can't sleep in the house and uh, before because when you know this, you can know a security man. There is a way we have trained ourselves to know who is a security man is. But again, not everyone in a in, uh, security forces is bad. Some of them don't agree with what is happening in government. And they come and give a word, take off. I remember that uh, the first Akoro Yomi went to the next time. So the uh, Nami Major told him, one day, we spent one day in Nigeria, like, come, like, and then so disappeared. So not all of them are bad, but of course they have to do that. They, that's what it is. So, in conclusion, there's no doubt that many public officials have not imbibed certain democratic norms. Which include accepting criticism. Section 22 of the Constitution is explicit, wherein the media was given a responsibility to hold the government accountable. Quite a number of these infractions are committed by the police and the army, which are exhibited lots of intolerance even under a democratic setting. It's also worrisome that many state governments govern their state as freedoms, where criticism is seen as an anathema. Media stakeholders and civil society groups need to continue to have. On the invulnerability of Section 2 of the Nigerian Constitution and the need to adhere to the admonition of the Court of Appeal in the case of Atom uh, case. Campaigns will be sustained by the civil society and human rights group to ensure that the President, the state governors, their deputies, and all high ranking public officials fully guarantee that journalists, bloggers, broadcasters, social media users, and all media professionals are allowed to carry out their work without any form of intimidation. Harassment, attacks, and persecution.